Hey everyone, it's Project SPC, and today I'm taking a look at One Netbook's newest productivity device, the T1 Tablet. Big thanks to them for sending this over for review. This is a lone prototype and is not the final design. There are some changes that are going to be incorporated that will improve both the device and the keyboard. So stay tuned for the crowdfunding for more details. So I'm really excited to be trying this out. This looks like a great two-in-one device for productivity and business needs. I definitely see myself using this for general browsing and doing some programming or CAD modeling on this PC. The detachable keyboard is great for working on the go. It works really well on a table or even in your lap if you have enough room. This device features the new 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs from Intel with P and E cores to maximize performance or efficiency when you need it. The one I have is the i5-1240P version, but there's also an i7-1260P and a budget-friendly Pentium 8505 version as well. On the left side, we have a full-function USB-C 3.2 port with DP all and power delivery. There's also a mini HDMI and a USB 3.2 Type-A port as well. On the other side, we have another USB 3.2 Type-A port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. We also have the volume up and down button and the power slash sleep button on top. Going over the internal specs, we have three different processors to choose from, from the Pentium 8505 with one P core, four E cores, six total threads, all the way up to the i5 and i7, which have four P cores, eight E cores, and 16 threads. This has LPDDR5 RAM running at 5200 megahertz in dual channel. The Pentium version is available in eight gigabytes and the i5 and i7 offer 16. For storage, you get an M.2 NVMe SSD. The Pentium version gets a 256 gigabyte SSD, the i5 a 512, and the i7 comes in a one and two terabyte version. This has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, thanks to the Intel AX201 inside. For battery, we have a 46 watt hour battery. For the display, we have a 13 inch 2K resolution touchscreen IPS display. It supports 10 point touch and 4096 styluses. Let's take a look at the stylus that you can get with this. So I've never really used one of these before. This is my first time actually using one. I just wanted to test how well it transitions between using a touch input versus the stylus. And as you can see, it is very smooth. Let's also try out some handwriting. So I've never used any kind of drawing apps on a computer either, but uh, this is actually pretty representative of my real life handwriting. So it actually does look like it's doing a good job. Lastly, this has a built-in USB-C port for charging. That's how you would charge this up. So I wanted to test how usable Fusion 360 is on this, especially without a keyboard and mouse. So I'm using the stylus and it is pretty usable. I actually would find myself using Fusion 360 without a keyboard and mouse. You can also see the power draw on the left-hand side. I do have it in battery saver mode, 35% brightness. And we're looking at six and a half to eight and a half watts of power usage, which puts us at six to seven hours of battery time. And that is impressive. The thing I love most about this is being able to dock it with my USB-C monitor. Just take the keyboard off, plug in the USB-C cable, and now I've got video, charging, and data all over one cable it looks like a dual monitor setup, very clean looking. Testing thermals, we've got Heaven Benchmark at 15 watts. We're around 66 degrees Celsius. And in the middle of the fan curve, we are at 39 decibels, a few inches away from the fan outlet. Bumping up to 25 watts, we're at around 90 degrees Celsius. And this is the upper limit for this device. The fan curve is at its max, but there hasn't been any high pitch whining noise, which is really nice to see. Just to show off a little bit of gaming, I have Risk of Rain 2 here. We're running this at 2K and we're at 21, 22 watts of CPU package power and we're getting just over 30 frames a second. So that is pretty impressive. Remember, this does have Intel XC. This is the i5-1240P and uh, the 30 frames a second, uh, that's definitely something that's nice to play. We could get it higher if we drop the resolution, but I just wanted to see how it would work at 2K. So like some others said, the hinge is strong when it's at a low angle like this, but once you open it up, 
it does tend to collapse quite easily, and this is one of the things they will address in the final design. You can also swap the SSD. There's a panel here, you take these screws off, and either it's underneath this panel or it makes it more accessible to get the front off, but the SSD is swappable. The T1 does have a webcam located right here, 2 megapixel, 1080p. It's obviously not a flagship Samsung or iPhone camera, but considering the rest of the One Netbook products did not have a webcam, it's certainly a welcome addition. It would work well for the occasional meeting or online conference. I wouldn't use it as a dedicated streaming webcam. One Netbook is marketing this as a Microsoft Surface competitor, and yeah, upgrading this with the Aldo Lake CPUs and adding that DDR5 RAM really gives this a great performance to value ratio compared to the Surface lineup. Overall, I'm really loving this device. I came from the One Mix 4 with its 10-inch screen, and this 13-inch display is amazing. It's definitely more comfortable viewing this screen. Being able to take it on the go with a detachable keyboard and dock to my monitor and tablet mode makes this such an awesome device. I'm also impressed with the system power usage. I personally backed this myself for the i5 version, and I'm looking forward to the changes they made in the final design. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, maybe even subscribe, and thanks for watching.